Well, thanks for clicking on the video and welcome to the LEGO Tour 2021. It's been almost two years since I've done one of these tours and in that time, the collection has grown substantially. So sit back, grab some popcorn. I hope you enjoy the full tour. Don't forget to stick around until the end where I will answer some questions. Uh, that I'm sure you're going to have rolling around in your head about how big is it, how much should it cost, and things like that. So anyway, again, hope you enjoy the show, and without further ado, let's get on to the tour. All right, here is the first area. This is my office where I keep all of my cars as well as anything related to space. So that could include city sets or mostly idea sets. And then the last part is Batman. So everything Batman I have here at work. So the new helmets, uh, which are really, really neat. And then all three Batmobiles that matter. And then the nice little promo that came with the big one. So that is the classic Batmobile redone in style. And then last but not least over here with Batman is the new Batwing. Decided not to hang it on the wall, but I think it looks really, really good. So that is one corner of my office. On the other side is the other space set as well as the four other creator cars. So up here I've got the Saturn V. And then down on this row, I've got four creator sets. I love these because I use the light tailing kits and lit these babies up so you can get a better view of the Mini Cooper along with its promo, the Slug Bug with its promo, the Fiat, which didn't have a little car but did come with the art uh, easel, and then last but not least, the T1 camper van. So I don't have the updated model of the camper van, but I, I like this one a lot better than the blue one. So, but yeah, this is where I keep everything at the office. This is actually the newest area of Lego that is up. This is in our playroom in our upstairs. So I thought it would be cool to put all the Lego Architecture Skyline series up and on full display. Lego architecture is one of my favorite themes. It's actually the theme that pulled me out of the dark ages and these landscape series are awesome. Uh, can't wait, there is a new series coming out. I think maybe it's Beijing uh, this coming year. So I do have some more shelving. So this is definitely up for expansion. One other thing I have up here is a Lego table that I built for my kiddos many years ago. You can see underneath there are buckets and buckets of loose Lego. That is primarily all Friends sets. So there's probably about 50,000 loose Lego worth of Friends and Elves just in that area alone. So yeah, it's pretty big. But that is one little area that is off to the side, and now it's finally on to the big area where I house mostly all the Lego. Welcome to the Lego room. I'm going to go over each shelf individually so you can kind of get an idea of what I have in here. Um, but yeah, this is the main display area for all of my Lego. Gonna start over with all the Star Wars UCS as well as some of the regular sets. You can see I have a couple Millennium Falcon. Uh, the A-Wing, which should be retiring this year. Got a Y-Wing. Got an X-Wing. <laughs> a lot of wings going on in there. Rebel Blockade cru uh, Cruiser. 
And then one of my favorites, Darth Maul. So that has actually all been bricklinked. So that is not original, but put together. One of my favorite sets is Slave One. You can see that bad boy going on with the Boba Fett helmet. And then up top, it's not Star Wars, but I got the uh, the Marvel helmets as well as Jabba the Hutt's palace. And then finally over here, little baby Grogu and one of my first ever, my first ever UCS set, UCS Yoda. So that is my oldest Lego set that I own. In the middle of everything, I've got the UCS Super Star Destroyer. Found this on Craigslist, believe it or not. It was a heck of a steal and it is one of my favorite sets. Also one of the longest sets that Lego has ever produced. So I think it is perfect on display over the television, so. Starting at the bottom on this left side, it's not Lego Star Wars, but it's the two Lego Simpsons series that were released. It's their house as well as the Quickie Mart. And in between, we've got the two CMF uh, minifig series that were released about the time the, uh, the two main buildings were released. Moving on up, we've got some more Star Wars sets. Um, not UCS, but some uh, helmets and some figs. A little uh, Star Destroyer, as well as the Sandcrawler. This is the re-released Sandcrawler, not the original, but I love it. And then, I'm going to start over here, a couple Craigslist finds. I got this Imperial Shuttle and a heck of a deal on Craigslist, as well as the old, I think it's a 2002 Darth Vader standing next to his helmet. Over here we have the Nintendo sets. I don't collect all the Mario stuff, but I mean, who can't get the, uh, the NES? But next to that is all the CMF, the Series 1, 2, and 3 of all the Mario minifigs that came out. Which I did a review video of Series 3, so go check it out. As we go up, this may actually be my favorite set. I know I say that a lot, but it's Voltron, guys. It is a Lego idea set, and it's... Incredible. I keep it in the robot, but you can actually do it as the five lions. And it's absolutely just, it's amazing that someone was able to come up with that. He's next to the upside down, which I think fits perfectly in that area. And then the two general grievances, both the playset version as well as the UCS general grievous. And then last but not least at the top, that is the UCS uh, Snowspeeder. That is the updated version. That's not the uh, original one that came out back in like 2005. And then next to that is the R2-D2. That is the original R2-D2. They re-released this one as well, but I think this one is the, I wanna say 2012 version. So, but that is the left side of the shelving. When we turn around to the back side of the shelving, I'll go ahead and start at the top. I did PAX shelving, by the way, from Ikea. They're a little bit deeper. It's set up as a, like a wardrobe station, but it just works really well for the big sets. Like the 2003 uh, Imperial Star Destroyer. This set's amazing, but it's also the scariest one to move because a lot of it's put together with magnets, believe it or not which is a little crazy. Versus next door to it, one of the most recent UCS releases is the Republic gunship. This bad boy is incredible at just over 3,000 pieces. Um, did a speed build video on that and it was super fun. Moving down below, we have a mixture of creator as well as Lego ideas sets. I've got the Treehouse which is so much fun in the autumn stage, but the leaves also do spring as well. Found this guy on eBay during quarantine. I think it was during quarantine. It's a 787 Dreamliner. I wanna say it came out in 2006 maybe. Um, I just love it. it. Takes up a lot of space, but it's really, really cool. And then all the Looney Tunes 
CMF figures. So that is the complete set of Looney Tunes. Below that, it is carnival time, both with the uh, merry-go-round, Ferris wheel, and roller coaster. The cool part about these two guys is they're motorized. So yeah, it's fun to show it off to people when they come by and see it for the first time. The roller coaster is motorized too, but it's kind of a pain in the butt, so I'm not turning it on for this video. But those three are really cool. There are other sets in the whole Carnival Amusement Creator Expert line, but those are the three that I own. Moving over, this is the re-released Taj Mahal. Um, just under 6,000 pieces at one time. The original Taj Mahal was the biggest set ever. Stand next to Big Ben, which is around 4,000 pieces. So yeah, you're looking at 10,000 Legos in this little shot. And then going up from here, again, one of the biggest sets ever produced is the Legos Hogwarts Castle. And that's next to the Ideas Grand Piano. The Grand Piano is absurd on how amazing the build is. So if you, even if you don't like Lego, you just, you have to be a fan of it. It's just so creative and so amazing. And yes, it plays and syncs up with your phone. So how do you like that? The rest of this shelving area is pretty much dedicated to Harry Potter. Over here, we've got Diagon Alley and all the figures that came with that. And behind it is Fox and Dumbledore. And then moving over to this shelf, there is a creator double-decker bus, but come on, it's English, so it fits. Hogsmeade, uh, Tack on the Burrow, Hedwig, The Flying Lesson, all the CMF minifigs that have come out in both series for Harry Potter, the updated chess set, Bellatrix Lestrange, more CMS minifigs. Platform nine and three quarters. Did I mention there's a lot of minifigs when it comes to Harry Potter? And then towards the bottom, we have Privet Drive, uh, Hagrid's Hut, and all the Moments books. I know it's not Harry Potter, but it does fit really, really well right there. I do love it. It's the Sesame Street's ideas set, and it's just really, really cute. I think it could go with Harry Potter, but yeah. Just to the right of the other Harry Potter stuff is, well, more Harry Potter. So we've got the buildable figures. That is the Harry Potter art set. This was one of the alternate designs, which I did a speed build of, which I love. And then some of the 20th anniversary uh, exclusive minifigs that came out with it. The other ones are in a box downstairs ready to be built. Over on the right, this is like eight sets, I wanna say currently, that you're able to put together in one big Hogwarts style buildable castle. And then all of the special little portraits that were released with this last wave of Harry Potter sets. Below that is actually just more Lego storage. So that is both on display as well as a lot of closets look like that too. But that's pretty much the Harry Potter area. Figured I'd show this real quick. These are sets that are going to be built. Um, yeah, I'm a little behind, but we're getting to it. Some of the new creator sets, more space. I've got three of the Sith artwork because that's going to become a huge Darth Vader. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, Ecto-1 back there, some friends as well as the typewriter hidden in the back. Pause, I'm cutting in in this video. It's funny, as I was making the video, I got a delivery. A teeny tiny little set as well as a couple little exclusives that came with it. So yeah, this is the new Lego AT-AT, the UCS set that was just released around Thanksgiving. It is, I think, personally incredible. Yeah, it retails for uh, yeah, $800, so not sure yet if 
Might resale just to try and get the price down. Or if I'm just going to open it, it's one of those things where it's just like, oh, Sophie's Choice. But gosh, I think it's so beautiful. And this box is gigantic. Seriously, look how big this box is. But yeah, so anyway, on with the tour. I just thought I'd show that off because there we go. Adding a new one to the collection. When you come in here, loose Lego, as well as some sets that are ready for sale, like some tower bridges. I think there's a portion there. And then you got some boxes that, yeah, I do keep the boxes. I'm crazy like that. And then the last area in the main room is dedicated towards Disney and the Winter Village. So love this shelving. Um, these are Billy shelves from Ikea. I think they make perfect display shelves as well. You can see little Wally right there. That's an idea set. He is super hard to come by as well as, again, probably my wife's favorite set of all time, the giant Disney castle. On the other side, we've got 100 Acre Woods, which was another idea set, and then the Disney train and Disney train station. With that, we've got all the CMF series that came with the uh, for the minifigs. So I love, I love, love, love these minifigs. I just think the the printing on them was absolutely amazing. As well as behind them, we've got the build, buildable Mickey and Minnie characters, which is a really, really fun set. So if you're into Disney at all, I highly recommend any of these sets. You absolutely cannot go wrong. At the very top, we usually take them down and put them on display at Christmas time, but this is the Winter Village. This is every Winter Village set that has been released minus this year. So they take and they release one Winter Village set a year and release it around Thanksgiving time and then they just make for great displays. They go great next to the uh, the Christmas tree or downstairs, and a lot of these are also able to be lit. I have some light tailing sets, so the, uh, the gingerbread house is a little crazy when it's fully lit up. But yeah, that's the other back shelf area in all of its glory. Well, first, my apologies. It is not very well lit in here, so we'll do what we can. But this is the last room. This is my home office area. And in here is where I keep pretty much the majority of my architecture sets, as well as my brickhead sets and a few miscellaneous things as well. Starting at the bottom and working our way up. Yeah, those are comic cards, because why not? I've got the Guggenheim as well as the Friends set. The Friends apartment is going to be built here soon. I've got the, uh, the Lego architecture set from Korea. I will not even attempt to pronounce it, but it is one of the hardest architecture sets to come by. I love these sets. Um, Big Bang Theory, the Adidas set, and this is a custom Iron Giant. I believe it was from Build Better Bricks is where you get the uh, the blueprints for that, which was really, really fun. And then more architecture sets as we go up. The Imperial Palace, the UN Headquarters, Taj Mahal, the Great Wall of China, and at the top, we've got the Brandenburg Gate as well as the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It's a Lego tour, so I will skip the Creo up there. Next group of shelving, continuing on with the theme, we've got the Trevi Fountain, Villa Savoy, a little bit of England going on here with Trafalgar Square and Buckingham Palace. And did I also mention I like rocks and minerals because I'm a giant nerd, so I'll show you. Yeah, look, I got those. They're fun. They're very pretty. Anywho, we got the Louvre and the Arc de Triomphe, which I can't ever pronounce, but you've got your Paris representation. And then in the middle, we have New York. So I felt that Ecto-1 fit very well with the rest of the New York fun. Moving on up, 
We've got some Marvel characters buildable, which has nothing to do with Lego, but is still really, really cool, so it's on display, as well as the Space Needle Infinity Gauntlet and the little wood guy that came out a little while ago. I don't remember what you actually would call him. And then finally, on the last group of shelving in the back, we've got Lego Birds and the Eiffel Tower. I want to show you this big bin. This is the Architecture Big Bin set but it's actually two of them and then some. What I did was mock it out. I saw something similar online and saw, thought it was really, really cool. So this is Big Ben on steroids for the Architecture Series. Moving down, one of the sets that really, really got me back into Lego is Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water. This set is absolutely incredible. As a fan of architecture, it is a must have. And then below that, we've got the Washington, D.C. Looking beautiful, as well as the Roby House. My wife bought me this set, and at the time, we were like, oh my god, we just spent $200 on a Lego. If we only knew. Next to it, I got the VIP coins because, well, I love coins, so it had nothing to do with just getting my hands on VIP coins for selling. I wanted these because I'm a huge fan of coins as well. Can you tell? Maybe I'm just a collector. Who knows? But below that, the final architecture sets that I have are the original Guggenheim, both John Hancock and Willis Towers, and then the Capitol Building, which is a really, really neat set as well. So turning around from the back wall, I have some more PAX shelving. This is a work in progress. Two amazing sets that literally just won't fit anywhere else are the original playable Death Star as well as the Eiffel Tower. This was a set that I bricklinked over a period of about 18 months, but a little hard work saved me hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So above that is the original big set that I got back in the day when I didn't realize Lego could be more than a couple thousand pieces. That's the Tower Bridge. And last but not least, showing it off in all of its glory are my Lego Brickhead sets. This is every Lego Brickheads minus the uh, exclusive sets that you found at the Comic Cons, the New York and San Diego Comic Cons, which I'll probably never own those because they go for like $700 for a Lego Brickheads, which is just, that's beyond stupid. So that will never happen. But I have them in order from release. They're numbered sets. And so I just thought it'd be kind of fun, mix it up a little bit and go by their actual number that they were released. Yeah, those are in a box. I see it too. It was a limited edition Target release, and uh, the, it's, I just, I don't know. I may open them, I may not, we'll see. And then last but not least, here on the bottom, this is a custom brick head that you got for going to, there was a, a Lego show in Houston this year, which was amazing, and so I have that as well. I know, those aren't Legos, so bypass them. But I've got the uh, 40th anniversary train exclusive, as well as some Bricktober sets. These were exclusive through Toys R Us back in like 2014. So really, really fun sets. But yeah, I'm going to need some more shelving definitely because Brickheads, while they have slowed down, definitely are going to have some more being released this year. But that is my home office. I want to say thanks if you've made it this far. I always like to end these collection videos with usually answering a couple questions for you uh, because the same questions usually get asked every time. One, how many sets do you have in your collection or how many Lego pieces do you have? And then two, how much money do you have invested in Lego? So I got a little cheat sheet here to help me out uh, to just to let you know. Question one I'll answer first is how many sets? Well, Kind of depends. On display, I have around 400 sets 
in random areas. Now most of that is, well, I mean a quarter of that is really brick heads. So nice small displays, but as you can tell, I have a lot of UCS sets too, so it does take up a lot of space. As far as piece count goes, it's about 300,000 pieces, give or take, that are on display or getting ready to be built, so I will count those. And then in storage and loose bricks, I have another additional probably 200,000 bricks. So I have a lot of tubs of just loose Lego and bins that uh, either need to be built or sorted out. So all told, it's almost probably around a half a million bricks in the collection. Question two that I always get is, you know, how much money do you have invested in Lego? Well, uh, I will tell you, I'm, I'm not going to release the exact figure because I know my, my wife is going to probably watch this, but I will tell you we're well into the five figure range. Um, although it may not be as much as you think because I tend to not only buy retail, but I'll look for good sales. Um, I will do buy and resale to buy down my price as well as I utilize eBay and Craigslist a lot. So I try to find used Lego when I can as long as it's a complete set. So I don't have as much into Lego as being able to buy a really nice new car yet, but probably definitely more than a used car at this point. So another question that usually gets asked is what's the biggest set I own? Well, ironically, the biggest set I own just came in the mail uh, this week. That's the UCS ATAT. It's got 6,785 pieces, uh, so yeah, it is my biggest set in the collection now. Second biggest is the Hogwarts Castle, and uh, those are the only two sets I have currently that are over 6,000 pieces. But I'm eyeing the world map still, as well as Titanic, and those two would definitely take the crown on that. Some people want to know how long have I been collecting? Um, I've been collecting, I would say, avidly for a little over a decade now. Uh, right around when the Tower Bridge came out and when Lego architecture started up. It was the original uh, teeny tiny little Empire State Building that I just thought was so cool. Uh, I love the architecture sets and that is what really brought me out of the dark ages. And I did have Imtron as a kid, so I definitely did collect and build Lego as a kid, but then I went into the dark ages and didn't get back into it until, you know, I was a dad. What are my favorite themes in Lego? So I'm not gonna rank them, it's like ranking your kids, but in no particular order, I love obviously what you've seen, Star Wars, architecture, Creator Expert is incredible right now. Lego Ideas may be on par to be the greatest theme ever just because of all of the diversity in it. And then Brickheads. I just think those are where it's at. Um, just amazing themes all around. I am not a city fan at all. I'm just going to tell you right there so you can go ahead and hit that that down thumb if you're a huge city fan. It, ju it just doesn't do it for me. Um, but I think the modulars are amazing. It's one of those sets, one of those themes that I seriously regret not collecting, but something had to go and there was a point probably about 2012 where I made an active choice where I wasn't going to pursue modulars. And yes, I regret it a little bit to this day. You're a Lego collector. People usually like to know how do you keep track of everything? Because once you get a pretty big collection, you kind of it's kind of important to be able to know what you have. So mine's pretty old school. I literally just keep an Excel file. I have you know release dates, uh, themes, the set numbers, uh, piece counts, price per piece, which some people will argue is important or not important. Um, highlighted the things I'm looking at selling. Um, and I have everything arranged by theme, and then within the theme, I have it arranged by the set number itself. But yeah, I just, I keep an Excel file for everything. There are some online Lego sites that you can track all of that with, um, but a couple that I used to use kind of went down in that, so I pretty much just relied on Excel for everything, and it's worked pretty well. If you're into collecting Lego, or maybe you're just starting your collection, a big question that people tend to ask is, where do you buy your Lego? 
Um, yeah, I buy retail. One at the Lego store. So being a VIP member is free. So if you're into that, I highly recommend you signing up because they have double VIP points where you can earn money to get Lego as well as exclusive sets as well. But besides the Lego store or shopping online at lego.com, uh, Target has become a big source for Lego, but a lot of it comes down to sales. Target, Walmart, places like that, you can find stuff at Barnes & Noble, although they tend to not have sales there. Um, online, eBay, Craigslist, Bricklink, and Brick Owl are probably my four favorite friends. Craigslist is always hit and miss depending on the area that you're at. eBay, you got to be good at it because you can get in a bidding war really easily and spend way more than you want to. But sometimes you'll get lucky, like with the uh, the Boeing set that I own, if things are are aligned right. Brick Link, although they're owned by Lego, I think is another great site because you're just utilizing other sellers that are in and around the world, as well as Brick Owl Tool too. A lot of competitive prices can be found there, as well as a lot of more obscure sets as well. So I highly recommend using a lot of the LEGO forums. They will show you the latest deals. Uh, Brick Picker is a great site that I like to use, and they usually list LEGO deals. So you can go to a place like Amazon for certain sets on certain days because they might have it marked off for 20% or more. There's no one good spot to buy Lego. It just kind of depends what you're looking for. And it also depends on how much you're willing to spend because Lego's not cheap. So I highly recommend always keeping your eye open for sales and things like that. And then jumping on that Lego before it retires. If a Lego set retires, if you're looking for that, the price is going to double usually and sometimes triple on how popular the Lego set is. Some of the older Lego sets that I own, they are worth a pretty penny right now just because you can't find them anymore and they are not produced in mass. That's what I would definitely recommend that you check out if you're looking to buy Lego yourself. So last but not least, again, I just want to say thanks if you made it this far in the video. I really appreciate you checking out my collection. It's been a heck of a year since um, 2021. It's been a lot more pieces into the collection, both in loose Lego, because I have bought a bunch of Lego in bulk to up those numbers, as well as just the display count. So it's been probably a good... 150,000 pieces worth of Lego that has been with, added within the year alone. And uh, we moved recently, so believe it or not, I still have Lego in boxes that still needs to get taken out and put on display. But uh, that's for next year's video, I suppose. So anyway, as I always say, I just, I appreciate you coming along. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one.